city, Tuscaloosa was the number one metro area in the country for identity fraud, followed by Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and some parts of South Florida. Credit card, then online shopping and payment account fraud were the most common scam categories. Lillian Wu, Fox News. The day before the NFL draft, a team has worked out a new deal for a new stadium with a lot of taxpayer financing. $760 million from the city, a half billion dollars from the state. 27 years since the Houston Oilers left the Astrodome for Tennessee to become the Titans, first in Memphis, then Nashville. The NFL team stated Wednesday, it's grateful to know the Titans will be a part of this great city and state for decades to come. Nashville's Metro Council approved a measure by a 26 to 12 vote. It locks the Titans into a new 30-year lease and non-relocation agreement to build a new stadium next to where the Titans have played since 1999. The cost, $2.1 million total, with hopes to open for the 2027 season to break ground next year. That's Fox's Jared Max in the NBA playoffs. Phoenix and Denver won to advance to the second round. I'm Dave Anthony. This is Fox News. It's time for WPTV's First Alert Weather from the WPTV News Channel 5 Newsroom. Now with seven meteorologists covering the Treasure and Gold Coasts 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now here's WPTV's First Alert Meteorologist. The shower thunderstorm is possible early afternoon along the coast. So have the rain gear handy because uh, really the main event is this evening through tonight. That's when we expect the threat for scattered severe thunderstorms during those hours. But overnight it dries down with mostly cloudy skies as temperatures dip into the low 70s and maybe the upper 60s in a few spots. Tomorrow's not going to be quite as stormy, just a pop-up shower. Hour thunderstorm as rain chance drops, but the temperatures go up into the upper 80s. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Jennifer Correa for WSTU 1450 Martin County's Heritage Station. You are listening to WSTU Stewart, Jensen Beach, Hope Sound, Martin County's Heritage Station. It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Good morning and welcome back and uh, appreciate you tuning in today. We have another really important and, and great show on tap. Um, we're going to talk about politics, of course, but especially are you vetting the candidates that you're voting for? And uh, I have with me today Shane Snavely. Uh, he's flown in from Virginia. We're talking about a, a local Senate race in Virginia. But, folks, this really can apply to anywhere in the United States. It's why you have to truly vet your candidates. So we're going to get into that in just a minute. First, I want to thank my sponsors. Don't forget about that best kept secret in Martin County. That is the Fish House Art Center down in the pocket in Port Salerno. You can look them up online, thefishhouseartcenter.com. But you can come by boat, car, stroll the boardwalk, explore what the best kept secret has to offer. It features local artists, an Airbnb, art gallery, boat charters, marina, craft and creamery, which is craft beers, wine, and 24 flavors of ice cream. So there literally is something there for the entire family to do and a lot of fun. Again, that's down in the pocket in Port Salerno. Also, commercial mortgage has been in the industry a small balance, corporate finance since 2003. Their focus is on equity, new debt solutions, challenging corporate foreclosures, and debt restructuring. Commercial Mortgage never charges a front fee or deposit, and consultations are always free. Areas of expertise include hotels, marinas, office buildings, restaurants, apartment multifamily, condos, golf courses, home builders, and land development, including new and repurposed developments. Call Commercial Mortgage today at 561-310-5295. That's 561-310-5295. Or visit them online, commercialmortgagellc.com. Com. And finally, Indian Town Marina. It is one of South Florida's best boat storage facilities, and it's located inland on the Okeechobee Waterway. Very well protected hurricane hole, as we all know. We're going to have to start worrying about that pretty soon. But in the meantime, it's also a full service.
service and do-it-yourself boatyard. So if you need any work done on your boat, give the great folks out there in Indian Town Marina a call at 772-631-3272. Again, 772-631-3272. And uh, the bridge is scheduled to be closed, uh, the St. Lucie Bridge, starting May 1st for 21 days. So if you need work on your boat, get it out there. Let them work on it those three weeks. You're not going out anyway if you're west of the bridge. Get that work done, and then when the bridge opens up, you'll be ready to roll and have fun. And finally, don't forget about our local Martin GOP. Republican Party of Martin County is having their second annual picnic in the park. It's this Saturday, April 29th, from noon to 3 p.m. It's at Indian Riverside Park in Jensen Beach. It's going to be a lot of fun things. Adults are just $20. Kids are only $5. And there's going to be uh, food and games, all kinds of great events. Again, this is their second annual event, and uh, I know you'll have a lot of fun if you head out there to the Indian Riverside Park, and that is this Saturday beginning at noon. So in the studio with me, I have Shane Snavely. Shane is a service-connected Army veteran. He has been a state and federal government contractor for many years. He has started and run many businesses over the last 30 years. He was team lead and senior legislative aide to Virginia State Senator Amanda Chase for 14 months and helped run her 2021 bid for Virginia governor. After Senator Chase lost the convention, he then supported and worked to help Governor Glenn Youngkin, Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears, and Attorney General Jason Myers get elected. He is now Senior Advisor to the Virginia State Senator Bryce Reeves. He is founding partner of Rainmaker Strategic Partners, a campaign consulting company, and Executive Protective Services, a personal protection company. He can be followed at Shane Political Operative on Facebook, badpolitics.us, and rainmakerstrategicpartners.com. Shane, welcome to the studio today, and uh, I just want to uh, not only welcome you, but tell us a little bit about badpolitics.us. You are a repeat guest, and that's a new website since the last time yes, you were here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Uh, what, what we're doing with that, we have a group now that has started. Uh, it, we're just now uh, in the process of building that site. But what it's going to do is we're going to start exposing um, bad politics, bad politicians, uh, the bad things that they do and that a lot of the voters don't know or don't hear about. Uh, a lot of the topics we're talking about today. Um, you know, a lot of the voters don't know the truth. All they know is what they hear. If Once they support a candidate, usually they just listen to what they say. And they don't know the, the back door of things the, the, and the bad things that happen. So we're going to start exposing that and, and have and that website's going to be up where we can also take tip, tips from people. You know, that's actually a fantastic idea, Shane, and we've got a lot to cover today. So, folks, we're not going to take calls in the studio because we want to make sure we cover everything we, we have. But I am watching my Facebook comments. So if you do have a question or comment for the show, uh, please tune in to Facebook Live. You can do that at the Casey Ingram Show Facebook page. And also this show will will be aired on uh, YouTube uh, later on this afternoon, so you can go to my YouTube page as well, the Casey Ingram Show, to watch the show. Uh, Commissioner Bruner, thank you very much. I appreciate you tuning in. And uh, I just want to say, Shane, that uh, that website is super important because it seems like um, there's far left and far right politicians, and they're really uh, shaping the way our politics are ran today. And I, I think that it's so important. It's something I talk about a lot on this show is mm -hmm. we really need to vet our candidates. I know with our, our own local congressman here, um, there was some things he, he does, insider trading. And, uh, you know, he we all know about his Facebook comments uh, to his campaign manager when he campaign manager was in South Africa, right. he stated, I'm so proud of you. I hope you hook up with at least 15 year old, at least 15, 15 year olds over there because it's legal, right? So those kinds of things, folks, I bring this up because we're going to be talking about uh, Senator Amanda Chase in Virginia today. But I think it's important that we really vet our candidates. And when they're elected, they're automatically called honorable. And if you start looking at who they are personally, their personal beliefs, and also who they hang around with, Maybe it's not so honorable, and I think that's why people really need to vet. It's not just who's out there being outrageous and salacious and, and grabbing headlines. You need to really vet the person personally. So, Shane, that's where we're at today. Um, we, we got a couple topics we're going to uh, talk about with Senator Chase, and uh, that's going to be the January 6th riots, mm -hmm. and also she was censured, uh, one of the very few in the state right. of Virginia to be censured. So uh, let's start out with the January 6th riots. Uh, there was a lot happening there and you were you were involved uh, with Senator Chase at that time. I was I was involved with her I started uh, January 13th and officially January 16th of 2021 so I, I was right on the tail end of that and right in right when all the fallout was coming. 
And a lot of fallout there was, by the way. Yes, that's one of the reasons they censured her. But of course, you know, the narrative that she tells is that she was just there for peaceful, uh, you know, peaceful protests. And that when the rioting started, she had already left the Capitol. It was leaving. Well, there's a big backstory to that that nobody knows. And, you know, the, the narrative that she's put out for two years is that, uh, well, you know, she did say a lot of bad things. She supported the, their patriots. Yeah, there were patriots there, a lot of patriots there. I know a lot of them. Um, but not the ones that go fighting police, uh, kicking in the doors. You know, and, and uh, of course, she's one of them, but a lot of, a lot of people have said that, you know, as Antifa, as BLM, as the federal government, as, you know, instigating it all. Uh, well, we're going to show some things that show that that's not necessarily the case. They're, I'm sure those actors were there, but uh, Senator Chase was with the leader of the Oath Keepers the night of January 5th. Most people don't know that in her district. Uh, because the narrative with her is, oh, I was just there to, to, to make a speech and then I left. Uh, so th they need to know the truth, and that's what I hope we can uh, elaborate on today. They do need, need to know the truth. And when January 6th happened, uh, there was a lot going on, and none of us really knew the facts, and they really have come out since that time. And um, there were some different militia-type groups there. And I'm before we get into this, Shane, I thought it would be a good idea to let folks know who some of the players were that we're going to be talking about and also the groups that they're with. Mm -hmm. So the first one is Oath Keepers. And folks, a lot of these groups, their websites have been taken off uh, offline. So I can't get exactly their quotes. So this is from Wikipedia. So keep that in mind about definitions um, because a lot of people can contribute to Wikipedia. But they all are militia-type groups. Oath Keepers is an American far-right anti-government militia whose leaders have been convicted of violently opposing the government of the United States, including the transfer of presidential powers prescribed by the U.S. Constitution. It was incorporated in 2009 by founder Stuart Rhodes, a lawyer and former paratrooper. Then there's the Boogaloo Boys. Boogaloo is a word used by right-wing extremists who harbor a mistrust of law enforcement and the government. The word is a reference to possible second civil war, which they hope to propagate. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, the term boogaloo, which began to predominate in far-right web spaces in early 2019, began as a shorthand for civil unrest following potential local or federal firearms confiscation and has been embraced by anti-government and white nationalist communities. Um, and then there was the... Um, the, the people that are involved behind that. Uh, Mike Dunn, he was also with the Last Sons of Liberty, which, uh, if I remember right, was the Boogaloo Boys and the Last Sons of Liberty, I think, were mm -hmm. factions of each other. Um, Mike Dunn stated about uh, his Boogaloo Boys, core beliefs we stand for are individual freedom and willing to defend anyone's rights to have individual freedoms pre preparing for the second civil war or boogaloo and that's a recent quote because he just got back from fighting in the ukraine and he's now training um, people to become a, a, a boogaloo boy so uh, amanda chase was with a lot of these folks and i'm going to go into their names here in a second uh, you talked about it on january 6th she was there she spoke on capitol hill one of her quotes we are here to be a sign of encouragement to the United States Senators and members of Congress that have to make a very important decision today. We are asking them to openly contest this election, which we know is stolen from the people of the United States of America. We know this election was fraudulent and they have stolen the vote. I want to remind you that, you know, five people died that day. One of them was a police officer as well. Um, some of the people, and we're, she met with some of them the night before, we're going to go through it, but let me call out their names. Stuart Rhodes is the founder of the far-right Oath Keeper Group. Um, he will be sentenced May 25 at 9.30 a.m. this year. He faces a maximum sentence of 60 years on charges for which he was convicted, including 20 years for a seditious conspiracy count. Mike Dunn is the leader of the Last Sons of Liberty, a faction of the Boogaloo Boys. Boogaloo Boy members were also the folks that attempted to abduct Governor Whitmer in Michigan. Uh, Dunn currently claims he's training with a group of more than 100 Boogaloo Boys in Virginia and calls itself Sons of Liberty and threatens to go to battle if Virginia tries to pass gun safety legislation. We will go to war, Dunn said. We will fight, we will die, and we will kill. That's from Vice News, March 8, 2023. Josh Macias, is, is it Macias or Macias, co-founder of Vets for Trump, and Anthony LaMata. Those two men were sentenced, wins, uh, sentenced uh, earlier this year for two years of probation after being convicted for bringing guns to a Philadelphia vote counting center while the 2020 presidential votes were being tallied. Um, both of those guys are from Virginia, 
And, you know, when I, when I speak of these two, um, they, if, Iggy, if you can put up uh, clip number one, um, are photographed with Senator Chase on the mm -hmm. steps when she was giving a, um, a speech. I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember that, uh, uh, what that was about. Yeah. Um, but has she denied kind of knowing them very oh, well, well since then? <laughs> What's funny is, you know, she denied when she was questioned, she even denied uh, knowing Stuart Rhodes, although she did a 40-minute Facebook Live video in a dark hotel room January, the night of January 5th, and they actually discussed um, the insurrection. They discussed um, having armed military ready to fight if, Trump, if President Trump called them up. Um, they discussed storming the Capitol. Um, this has all been brought out in testimony, sworn testimony in some of these trials. And, you know, when she was censured, uh, you know, very quickly after that, you know, January 27th of that year, she was censured, and that was one of the topics. Now, that was, there was eight, but that was one of the, the topics. And, you know, she's, she's uh, even on the Senate floor, she, she praised them. And uh, now, what people should understand is, is I, I believe in a lot of the things that militia bl groups live in, and, and mm -hmm. I've been involved with, with militias and helping the peaceful ones, the ones that want to protect their community. Uh, a lot of this got started, um, especially during the, the 2020 riots. And in Southwest Virginia, I was a, a big part of that, of, of recruiting and, and getting people together. But what th their goal was, was to actually support their town and not let it come in and get burned. And then that's a goal we all can support because it was ridiculous. And, you know, so there's there's a, lot of, a lot of good conservative people that are like-minded that, yeah, they're ready to, to defend their, their community, to defend their homes. But they're not radical in, 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 you know, far, far right where they just want to go out and do illegal things. And that, that's where we're stating here today, Shane, is, is the far left and the far right. And those riots, they did help instigate a lot of these groups here to rise up and try and, and you know, defend America. But you can take it too far, and that's kind of what's happening here. I mean, folks, that riot on Capitol Hill on January 6th, that went too far when it went inside, and there was violence there. Uh, that that was disheartening, I think, to most every patriot yeah, here in America. Yeah, and you know, and there's a lot of good people that even went in there. You, it's it's sort of like the you know the whoever. Well, it's a mob rule. You're kind of involved. Throw the, whoever in, throws the first brick, right? You know, you're excited. You're you're mad because you do believe the election was stolen. And and, and I was uh, in the election integrity circuit since it started. I have seen a lot of cheating and a lot of things that people still deny. I've been on the audit floor, the, the, Senate, the audit floor in uh, Arizona for that, you know, and they, they've they've bashed that. But I actually saw things that were, I mean, 17,000 du dupl duplicate ballots, um, mm -hmm. pristine mail-in ballots that when they looked under the microscope, they were not folded. You know, there's, there's a lot of things there. And, you know, that's, that, that state was only lost by 10,400 some votes. And, and, and when you got 17,000 proven duplicates so there there's there's rightfully so people have an issue with that especially conservatives that you know president trump got 75 what 75 million votes yeah the most that every incumbent president ever and and, and joe lost. biden didn't even campaign and gets 80 come on there yeah, yeah it, it's it it seems to us that there is a problem uh, so a lot of these people rightly so but when you go to the extreme of of you know, that that would never have gone good. When I was when this was getting ready to get started, I was offered uh, asked to go to to Washington D.C. for that, and I said, "There's nothing going to come good out of that. I'm not going. No matter what happens, there's nothing going to come good out of it because something's going to happen." And and that's what happened. And a lot of people got involved in that. But my issue with going back to Amanda Chase on this is she was with him, and elected officials have a higher standard, you know. And when you're sitting between two people that are planning this and and Stuart Rhodes actually on, I think it was uh, January 8th, actually stated that the only mistake he made was not bringing guns. That's right. You know, come on. That's, a, a civil war would destroy the country. Uh, would a civil war to a lot of people's ideals be a good thing? Yeah, but. Actually, actually just hold a second. Um, if you can play cut to uh, Evan and that, that's Stuart Rhodes stating that. I thought was what was really compelling about the opening arguments from the government today was that they revealed this new audio. We've seen a lot of text messages from the Oath Keepers, but they trotted out this new audio that was recorded a few days after January 6th that features Stuart Rhodes. And, you know, it sort of debunks, I suppose, a lot of what the defense is trying to roll out now, because on that audio tape, Stuart Rhodes said that his only regret about January 6th is that they didn't bring rifles. And indeed, the government says that rifles were stationed outside of uh, the District of Columbia in Virginia at a hotel there, uh, ready for action, essentially a quick reaction force. Uh, that was so that's actually the mm -hmm. clip from from his trial, um, and also you're you're here 
to talk about Senator Chase's involvement in particular because she met with some of the people that did take this too far that day. Right. And, you know, she was in a hotel room the night before, and one of the people that was there was uh, Kelly Sorelli. Uh, self, she's the general counsel for um, the Oath Keepers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's that's something there um, that needs needs to be pointed out that the night before she was meeting with it was Kelly Sorelli. It was, if I remember right, Stuart Rhodes. Mm-hmm. And Josh Maceus. And, and Josh Maceus. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a lot of uh, Facebook Live videos, and they were talking about, you know, the, the meeting at the Capitol the next day. So your point of this as, as a senator, um, as a representative of the people, um, what should have been her position as – how you see it, how it played out and what's happened since then. Well, her, her position, of, I, I think, the entire time was, was to be the radical um, gaslighter. Uh, you know, when you show up to a meeting the night before with a guy that's actually, you know, one of the ones discussing storming the Capitol, one of the ones that's discussing wishing he would have brought guns. Um, now, Josh Mercedes, Josh and I are friends. I know him fairly well. Um, if you if you listen to that audio, he's talking about only using force if President Trump uh, called up the Insurrection Act, and a lot of this stuff just got blown out of proportion. Um, would I have been there and, and, and been in that room? No, no way. Um, so you know the problem with Senator Chase is she's an elected official, she's held to a higher standard, and when you when elected when when these people are are upset, they're getting radicalized, and they start feeling like that elected officials are supporting them, that emboldens them and that makes them make some bad decisions. You know, when you have a senator right sitting in between you, passing the microphone back and forth while you're talking about this, talking about the insurrection, talking about storming the Capitol, and and talking about having guns and having uh, quick reaction forces in Virginia ready to come in, uh, she basically gives it credit and she's basically supporting it. And that makes these people feel like they're doing the right thing. You know, when you have elected officials saying yes, I believe this. I've seen it. I've seen the. I've seen the audits. I've seen the the the, uh, the cheating, and I believe it was stolen. And we need to do something about it. And the bigger issue there is she's lied about it ever since. The only thing she's ever said is that she was there for the January 6th. She made the speech, and she, when things started getting rough, she left. Well, she isn't telling anybody, and I don't even think the Senate, when they censured her, knew that all these details that she was with these people these people who discussed it in their in their testimonies they've dis- discussed uh you know actually talking about storming the capitol in fact Iggy, if you can put up uh, uh clip number two this is kelly sorelli uh again she was the counsel for the oath keepers if this is her deposition mm-hmm. she stated senator amanda chase was in the room with them and not only that there's there's photos and there's videos uh, and this has kind of been a pattern with senator chase is when it gets hot she's out there she's an instigator she'll be she's walked into the the senate floor wearing her, her pistol on her hip um and and people seem to love that yeah but you know what happens as soon as the heat turns up she doesn't know him and, she's, and she cowers away and lets them take the heat and instead of standing up for him. So what real patriot is that? And that's that's what we're going to show here. Um, you know, when I talk about Lamada and Messiahs, uh, the, the folks that were uh, arrested in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. um, Iggy, if you can put up uh, cut three and cut four, uh, Senator Chase just can't deny it. She's standing in front of Lamada's Jeep. With, did you notice what the flag actually was? Behind her, there's a QAnon flag. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Q and F like so and she's, and her claim was she didn't know it was there. Well, guess what? You rode in the you rode up there with him in that in that you you knew that flag was there. It was right behind you, so I don't know how you'd walk up there but, and you know, not see that. That's the classic thing. Anytime, anytime, she's she's all about being in the radical movement and supporting them and, and, and gaslighting them, but then when it comes out that she's involved in it. She's, she doesn't know him anymore. And that's and, and we're going to move through these a little bit quicker because yeah. we need to get onto the center. But, um, again, and that's uh, Iggy, if clip four, uh, she's on the steps with Lamada and Messias. So she obviously knew these folks really well. Once the heat was turned up, she kind of tried to backtrack, which a lot of politicians do. If something's bad, they were wait, just I don't supporters, know She said they were just supporters of mine. No, they weren't. They were actually helping you with your campaign. Um, what about James Davis? Can you tell us a little bit about him, Iggy? Uh, cut five. 
James Davis um, was there. He got uh, actually charged, and they have video, audio, pictures um, of him with his stick actually fighting and fighting with the police, the Capitol Police. And uh, that's right. He he was charged with assaulting, resisting, and impeding officers, disorderly and disruptive conduct, engaging in physical violence in a restricted building on grounds, act of physical violence in the U.S. Capitol grounds or buildings, and obstruction of law enforcement during civil disorder. All right. And James so he's Davis going through actually, court right now. Uh, James actually worked. Um, he was our number one data input guy for. We used to do. Um, I'm with Amanda Chase cards with all your information. Then we put it in our system. But James was our number one volunteer putting all that data in. He was very good at that, you know. But she knew he was there. Uh, she, uh, she. It was obvious. Many many people were talking about. He actually did fight the the police. That, and now it comes out. We had they had the video. You can't deny it. Um, but you know he stayed on our campaign all the way through until. Uh, she lost the convention. And again, uh, these are all folks that she has been dealing with, and then she backs down. Uh, Iggy, if you can put up number six, she denied even knowing Stuart Rhodes um, from the Oath Keepers, and there she was in the hotel with him um, the night before, uh, January 5th. So, uh, While they were planning storming the Capitol. While they were planning it. Um, and then, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit more about that t- as well, because that, that was a big deal. Uh, she actually did a Facebook Live or a Twitter Live video, and it was a fairly long video the night before. And again, that was, that was with Stuart Rhodes, uh, Josh Messias, and uh, Kelly. Um, Shirley. Yes. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's hard to deny those things. But yet, after the, the riots, she kind of went away quietly. Well, and that's why yeah. you're here today, is saying yeah. this, this wasn't uh, – she was actually part of this as well – Stand up and admit it. Well, you know, if, if you're, you, you, you get up and talk about how much you support all these groups and you, and you go in and you, you, you just talk a big speech and you rile them, rile them up and you get them going and they believe in you and then when they act on a lot of the things that you're gaslighting and then you turn away and act like you don't even know them, you know, to me, that's, I mean, if you're going to do it, do it and stand with them. So, and here's, I, a lot of folks say this. I have somebody here, Jan, uh, appreciate you tuning in as always, Jan, but she says, I know so many people that were there, good church people. It was peaceful and it was a setup. Um, there were a lot of good people there, mm-hmm. but I, it did not end up peaceful. Well, there's a lot of factors there, um, whether the police let them in, uh, whether they didn't. There was, there's obviously a video of, of, of the Capitol That's Police right. letting some people in. There was a lot of dynamics to that, but we're not talking about that right now. What we're talking about is the night before them actually discussing and planning it. So that's not a setup. And again, the, the Stuart Rhodes with the Oath Keepers regrets not bringing his guns. I there. said that's not a setup. Yeah, you know. So the, the the narrative has been all everything was a setup. Well, yeah, there was there were some things that were probably instigated, but you know, you don't have to go into the Capitol when you know it's not right. That's right. That's right. And it it's not a setup when you're talking about well, it the night before. You know and. You know, we, I, I even said, you know, well, they're so mad about January 6th, one day of rioting, and, um, which was originally was very peaceful, and it ended up bad. But, you know, they let the cities burn and be, and be looted for, what, a year? Yeah. And nobody did anything. Yeah. Uh, even the vice president was helping bail people out. Yeah. You know, so there is a big factor to this. But when you go that far, you were just like them. And, you know, the Republican Party and conservatives are supposed to be uh, people of the rule of law, the party of the rule of law. Uh, rule of law. And um, when, when this happens, you, you're not, nothing's gonna, good going to come out. What are you going to think you're going to do? You go in there and what, kidnap the senators, kidnap the, the, the House, um, and violence is going to get there? How is that ever going to solve anything? You know, what, we, what, what could have been done is, is use that rally with the millions of people that were there, the millions of supporters that do believe the election was stolen and do believe a lot of these things that, uh, that I do believe. Uh, what should have, been, should have happened is we should have rallied millions and millions of people there, just like the Million Man March and things like that, and demanded it that way. But when it goes sideways to, to the violence, that you can never win that fight with the, with the United States government. Uh, when it goes to violence, it just destroys the destroys the, the movement. And I think we need to be very clear there, and that's exactly what 100% Shane, what you're saying. We absolutely should have assembled. You absolutely can assemble, and that that's what a, what being an American is about. That's part of our rights. We can peacefully assemble, mm-hmm. uh, and if we want to protest something, that's fine. But you know, even jurist, uh, it's a legal news service uh, that's empowered entirely by law students. According to the committee, members of the Proud Boys Oath Keepers, along with Josh Messias, leader of Vets for Trump, and Virginia State Senator Amanda Chase met at Phoenix Park Hotel in Washington, D.C. on the night of January 5, the night before. The group participated in a live stream discussion led by Chase, promoted false election fraud claims, and encouraged Trump to invoke
invoke the Insurrection Act. The live, screen, live stream discussed storming the Capitol. That's mm-hmm. the problem there. When you cross the line, it was no longer a peaceful protest or assemblage. It was and storming the Capitol. And the official uh, uh, with the oath to uphold the Constitution and the rule of law. And she's um, a senator who is and, absolutely you know, kicking an oath. If you want to talk about um, an insurrectionist, and that's, the, th- that's the definition. I mean... She shouldn't be able to hold office because of that, in my opinion. Now, folks, and we're going we're gonna to move on now to she was censured for this, yep. uh, which was a really big deal in the state of Virginia. And this censure, uh, a lot of the Republicans spoke up and, and spoke, and we're going to listen to some of them now, um, Shane, because I think it's super important to realize this was her colleagues. Right, and that's why I wanted to discuss this topic uh, especially because, you know, th- that's the other narrative she's done. The narrative with the January 6th thing for two years is all. I was just there on January 6th for a couple of hours, made a speech, and left. Well, we know that's not true. But see, all of her voters don't know that's not true. So we have to start uh, exposing these things. But with the censure, what her her uh, base that believes whatever she says that comes out of her mouth instead of actually investigating and looking and researching her, um, what they should know is that, <laughs> I mean, you hear these senators these are her colleagues. These are her Republican colleagues. Well, her her idea is well, they're all rhinos in the establishment. Well, what's what's an establishment? What's a rhino? Everybody that doesn't believe like you, because that seems to be her. That's just like you know, if you don't if you don't if you don't agree with somebody on the left, you're a racist. Doesn't matter what color you are, you're a racist. You know. So, what people need to understand is is what, when you're going to hear these senators, this is way deeper than that. But her supporters just think that she was censured for her free speech rights. And because she showed up for a peaceful rally on January 6th, well, both of the topics we're talking about today shows that that's not true. She was censured for much more, and you're going to—it's going to be explosive. These testimonies. She was censured for for associating and encouraging folks that were there to storm the Capitol. It wasn't a peaceful assembly. And that's the goal here today: is to actually put this on record where voters actually—you know—we need to start getting informed. We don't just shouldn't just vote by name recognition. We shouldn't just vote by what they say out of their mouth because politicians are damn good liars. They are. They are. And they spin very well, by the way. I mean, I know she'll turn this around and say, these are patriots and I'm being a patriot. There's so much more to this story. So I have some cuts here from her colleagues. Uh, The first one is from uh, Democratic Senator John Bell. The rest are going to be from her Republican colleagues. So uh, cut three, uh, Senator John Bell. Must be honorable. Members of the General Assembly have been called keepers of the flame, which is a responsibility I hold sacred. As Virginia senators, we must be held accountable for our behavior and our words. And as senators in this body, I believe we must be held to a higher standard. Unfortunately, I believe that numerous comments and behaviors of the senior senator from Chesterfield are unbecoming of a senator and for the good of the body, and to protect the long-standing honors and traditions of this institution, I believe this censor action must be passed. Next, I renew my motion for passage. Thank you, Mr. President. Next, we're going to hear from, if you want to hear these, uh, good enough. Uh, cut number four is from Senator Thomas Normant. He's the minority leader of the Senate of Virginia. My comments, Mr. President, are going to be focused on Two words, hypocrisy and integrity. And I will say, Mr. President, this is not a First Amendment issue with me. It is about hypocrisy and integrity. When you come to the Senate of Virginia, you only bring one thing with you, and that is your personal integrity and your forthrightness, that your fellow senators must know that they can rely upon what you tell them. And if you forfeit that personal integrity, then you might as well leave because you will not have credibility with your fellow senators on either side of the aisle and the institutional community will not trust you whatsoever. So that is a point of integrity that I deal with. And I feel that the personal integrity has been blatantly violated on the floor of the Senate. And this was only a recent occurrence. In the appalling unapology comments that were made by the senior senator from Chesterfield, she commented that she could have, she could have filed 
a resolution of censure against our president pro tem, the senator from Portsmouth. And I heard that unequivocally. She said she did not file it. As I shared with one of our other senators on the Democratic side that I genuinely am very fond of, it's a rare occasion that I ask a question that I don't know the answer to. So I went back and looked about, did she not file a resolution against the senator from Portsmouth? While I personally feel there was no factual basis whatsoever for even making that overture, and obviously it was supported by the Commonwealth attorney in Portsmouth and the judge, Wednesday, January the 20th, 1149, filed LD number 3337, a resolution of censure against the senator from Portsmouth. At 11.49, an email was sent to the senior senator from Chesterfield. You are over your limit. It cannot be accepted. You are over your limit of 12 and cannot be accepted. That was at 11.49. At 6.08 that same evening, she turned around and filed it again. And to have the unmitigated timidity to stand up on this floor and tell 38 of us that she had not done that is unacceptable to me. All this First Amendment stuff aside, hypocrisy and violation of personal integrity is totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. And I just honestly, in a prayerful way, as I reflect on the time the energy, the emotions that we have spent on this issue. I prayerfully wish that she would use that energy and that time on dealing with her own emotional and mental well-being, and it would not just benefit her, but 38 others of it. Thank you, Mr. President. That one's our longest clip, and it's extremely powerful. Again, this is from the minority leader of the Senate of Virginia, uh, Senator Thomas Norment. And also, you know, Shane, you were here before because she is a staunch um, um, opposer of red flag laws. And yet she's used red flag laws against her very own staff. Yeah, and, and since then, uh, I, I found out she made a statement. She didn't use red flag laws. She just called the police. They decided it was a red flag law. She knew this. We discussed it. She knew that what, exactly what she was doing. Just like she knew exactly what she was doing when she went and filed for a protective order against me, although four days before that, when I exposed her for using the red flag law in the Judiciary Committee, she actually went right in her office and said, I should red flag Shane now. You know, uh, she brags that she carries her gun everywhere. Everywhere you go, she's got, the, got her, what they call a gun purse. It's an American flag purse and it's a concealed carry purse. She carries her gun everywhere. She brags about it. She talks about it. she doesn't miss. She carries it everywhere. I carry my gun everywhere, y'all. And then she's, but then she goes to the judge and, and says she's scared for her life because I have guns. You know, something's just not right here. Well, it's a pattern of saying one thing and then denying oh, it, and, and doing, yeah. that that's what just what Senator Norment just said. It, you know, she told the whole Senate, I, I wasn't going to censure this. And they, folks, this, this is a personal thing, but up in Virginia, you don't call them by their name. You call them by wherever they're representing, which to me is confusing because right. it was for them. You're trying to figure out where they're from, but that's why you don't hear them say Senator so-and-so. Right. Um, so let's let's move on. I, I want to get through these other uh, senator remarks. Uh, this is Senator Mark Obershane. Uh, if you can hit cut number five. I'm also offended by this notion that whatever happens, these men and women in uniform, we're going to blame them first, whether it's for a personal confrontation or for actions that took place in the United States Capitol. It's just fundamentally wrong, and it goes to the core of who I am and what I believe, and uh, that I find deeply troubling. Uh, as the senator from James City County pointed out, she has long ago exhausted any remaining reservoir of trust and credibility with most of her colleagues, if not all of her colleagues, and I'm not sure that at this point in time she can claim a single member 
of the General Assembly, not just the Senate, but the House of Delegates and the Senate as an ally in any regard in either chamber, Republican or Democrat or Independent. And I am deeply concerned about the generally and consistently narcissistic behavior that we have seen over the course of the past two years. So folks, again, that was Republican Senator Mark Obershane, and the incident he was referring to with the police, uh, she had a, uh, a run-in with the Capitol Police in Virginia that uh, she wanted a special parking spot. She wasn't parking in her designated area, and the police officer was doing their job and said, you're not able to. And she became very irate. She used profanities, and she said, do you know who I am? I am Senator Chase. And exactly. it, it well, that's a pattern of her. If, if it you, is a pattern. If you knew how many times, that's almost like you could wake up in the middle, in the middle of the night with, uh, I'm a sitting state senator and I deserve this, or I deserve to speak, or I deserve this, or I deserve that. You know, the first two years she was in office, they said she was a rising star. She did a lot of good things. And somewhere something happened, something switched off. And they either, the, either there is some kind of issues like several of the senators are saying with, uh, you know, uh, emotional or mental things. I mean, they said it, not me. Um, there is some kind of issue there, or it's it's a combination of that, and uh, she just she's overwhelmed with the feeling of entitlement, and, and and feels that she has all the power to do whatever she wants to do. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's just unbelievable her actions. But if you knew how many times I had to listen, I'm I'm a sitting state senator. I'm a sitting state senator, and I deserve to speak. And I'm not even going to events if I can't speak, because I deserve it, and I should be there because I'm a sitting state senator. You never hear this from any of these other. I mean, I've never heard it from any of the other legislators. It, just the audacity to think that you're better than everybody else because you're a sitting state senator um, is is beyond me. She forgets that it's actually a, a position of a public servant. And it's the people's seat. It's not her seat. That's right. She acts like it's her seat. And um, the, one of the other things is when she here's you know her the audacity and the hypocrisy when she ran. There's there's audio and video of her when she was running the first time that said she was for term limits and she was only going to run for two terms. Guess what term this is? This is the third term. So Sounds it's just like, like a, a congressman masked here in this right. district. Just like a lot of them. That, you know, so is she for the people? Is she a constitutionalist? It, 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 it appears not. Every, all of her actions are the exact opposite. Now, she, she gets up and screams and, and yells that she's a, for the Second Amendment, she's the First Amendment, and, and she's down for the people and she's fighting for the people. But then she does all the exact opposite of those things. You know, and, and when you don't get anything done for your people for five years, in the last this last session you didn't get one bill out of committee. You, you know, you got there's a problem there, and, and the next few clips will, will, will even you know, codify that. But uh, it, I just want the voters. If, hey, if they elect her, I told her. I said, I said, Amanda, if you win this election, I said I'm going to do everything I can, and I'm going to expose you. I'm going to do everything I can to keep you from getting elected. And if you get elected, I'll be the first one to come out and praise you. That damn, you did a good job. You know, but I, but the people should know what they're voting for, not what's coming out of her mouth. They, they do, They need, and they need to hear, I, I believe, what these other senators, these are her colleagues, these are her Republican senators. Um, and very conservative, some of them. Some of them are very conservative, you, you know them very well, but you need somebody to represent you that's going to be able to get something accomplished for you. And if nobody's getting along with you, I, I asked the, the residents um, in that district, what can that person do for you if they have absolutely well, no leeway or, or pull know, in the Senate? With her, you know, she was further right on, on the spectrum of conservatism and you know so I'm friends with you know all the the, the, the further right conservative John Fredericks the uh, vets for Trump I'm friendly the Osmo uh, is the one that founded vets for Trump you know I know all these guys and, and when I tell them all these things a lot of them know how bad she is but the always the comment is even vets for Trump just endorsed her or no vets for America first which is former vets for Trump they just endorsed her, and, and I'm friends with, with, with those people. And I'm, I'm like, w are you kidding? And the, the comments are always, well, she votes the right way. Well, voting the right way doesn't get stuff done for your constituents. Since she actually doesn't vote the right way, this last session she was the only Republican that voted with, with all, every other Democrat um, senator. Well, I think it's a sign in our country, Shane, that uh, you can look at these races around the country. It's, it's the politicians that have become salacious mm -hmm. that for whatever reason people are gravitating to and they don't look beyond that they like the person that goes out there and they're, they're oh, they, they toting they're fighting for them right they they feel like they are but it's it is just words and it, it doesn't necessarily translate into actually helping improve the country or passing legislation and, that's helpful and with uh, with with 
probably if we win the Senate back as Republicans and take control, it's going to probably be a very slim one or two seats. And we don't need somebody that if she gets pissed off, she votes against the governor because she's pissed. Or we don't need somebody that she's, you know, here's the other problem. Uh, voters need to know this. Every senator that I know is against her, and a lot of them have already endorsed her opponent. That's a that's a big step for, for these senators to actually endorse, and there's been many since I was here last time. Uh, one of the most conservative, a good, a good friend of mine, just endorsed her opponent. You know, and that's a big step. You usually would never do that. You would stay out of the race until the primary is over with. But they know how bad she is, and they know how bad she's, the actions that she takes and the things that she does, that they're actually exposing themselves to their, to their conservative base by going against her because it's, doing, it's the right thing to do. They know if we get to control of the Senate, we don't need some far-right firebrand that all she does is talk, 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 and gaslight everything. You just want a good conservative. Uh, let's make sure we get these other clips. Cut six is Senator Stephen Newman, Republican. And when I vote against this resolution, I am not here to defend anything that's in here because in many case, cases, in my opinion, many of it is undefendable. Mr. President, I really hope that the Senator from Chesterfield has the opportunity to get the help that's needed. This series of items that are in this list represent to me a bit of a call for help. And I hope that she gets that help. But when you see the a bit of the arrogance and the, and the only way I boil it down is the hubris that really comes out and the lack of authenticity as well. It's disturbing. Uh, senator Chase is the senator from Chesterfield. Uh, if we can move on to cut seven, Senator William Stanley, Jr., Republican. Humility. Something that's missing. Something that's missing here that I think, quite frankly, saddens me. I'm disappointed because so much promise, so much ability has been wasted on ambition and a sense of entitlement. And quite frankly, a lack of accountability, blamelessness. And those that may not sit here every day may not understand what we're saying, but when we say it, we say it in earnest because it's something we don't want to say. It's all about the senior senator from Chesterfield. And it has now turned to be not at all about the people that she serves or hopes to serve in the future. Uh, folks, there's, there's one more cut here, and this was overwhelming. I watched their full statements, and this wasn't easy for any of these senators. Um, you know, especially when you're a Republican, you like to stick together with your party. But this was so important to them. They did speak out, and the censure did happen. Uh, finally, we're going to hear cut eight, Senator Jill Vogel, also a Republican. And during my tenure in this body, there has never been a time that outside my interaction the senator who's the subject of this censure. Aside from that senator, there has never been a time that any other member of this body has ever been deceitful, openly dishonest, or has conducted themselves with anything other than the utmost dignity. So folks, I mean, th this is what we're talking about here, right, Shane? Uh, we started this uh, show st talking about the riots on January 6th on Capitol Hill. She was heavily involved. That's really what was the impetus to bring about this censure finally. Uh, they brought up some other issues that's happened over the years. But it's, it's about a person that um, is supposed to be representing the good people of Virginia in her district. And I, I think they, um, I think most of this that we're re revealing today about the January 6th and her participation in January, the night of January 5th, I think a lot of these senators, if, if, if any of them, I think they didn't even know this. I think if they really knew what we're talking about today and all the other pages of evidence we have, I think she might have been expelled versus censured. Um, and rightly so, because uh, it, it, you just cannot gaslight everybody. And it, the far right and the far left are holding a sausage. And, and I saw a comment here where there's no such thing as a, uh, too far right. Well, sure there is. It, 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 as long as you're far right and you're not violent, but the thing is, you also need to uh, stop listening to the far right candidates that, that, that just talk, 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 and they never do anything for you. And so the whole goal today was to, to bring these couple of issues out because I think no voter 
that I know knows about it. Very few ever watched that censure. So all they knew was the, her timeline of, oh, they censured me because I was there for a peaceful protest. She said she was wearing it as a badge of honor. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But then here's another thing, and I'd like to see her, uh, her donors start looking at her financials because she spent between uh, suing the Senate and suing the Senate, the clerk of the Senate, to try to reverse that that she said was a, was a badge of honor. Uh, she spent, uh, and, and then she sued the Republican Party because she didn't like the, the, the nomination pro process for governor. Uh, she spent, I think, $23,000 of donor money. Uh, the financials just came out uh, this, this month uh, for the first quarter, and I see that she spent, uh, I think it was $2,000 or $2,300 on the lawyer to, to um, fight my, to get me, to get the protective order. Well, you know, if, if you're going to come after people that, that disagree with you, and especially politically when they're coming after you, and as, in her words, I'm causing too much damage, well, if you're going to do that, why don't you pay for it out of your own pocket? If you're going to do you revenge and you're going to weaponize the legal system, whether it's civil or, or, or a criminal, then I think what you should do is you should pay for it out of your own pocket, not use your donor's money. And um, and so, but uh, this is this is her track record. So I think up, up now she's about twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars since uh, twenty twenty one, since the beginning of twenty twenty one, uh, of her donor's money fighting cases or, or getting protective orders, and she's lost every one of them so far. Mine is still open. Uh, I'm, I'm, I still have a good plan for that. I have a lot of support. Uh, I've got a lot of financial backing now to do some things with her. And um, so if she wants to do these things, do it. If that's your, that's your revenge tactic, but don't spend your donors' money because a lot of your donors, which she boasts, are under $100 donors that can't really afford to give you money, and they don't need to give you money to go fight your legal battles because, because you're pissed at somebody. And they also don't need to uh, give you money uh, and they should look at her financials uh, on all the all the money she spends going out to eat, ten miles from her house. All the all the things she's done running around the country. There are certain things that people need to know about these financials, and that's one of the things with badpolitics.us. Those are the things that we're going to start doing. We're going to start showing financials and showing w what politicians are doing. Now, it's not illegal in, in Virginia to to use campaign money for your personal expenses, but if you had any kind of morals. You wouldn't go blow money that you, that somebody gives you twenty five dollars, and that's a lot, a lot for them to give that's you. That's right. You know, you would actually be a good steward of that money. And like I said, to blow thousands of dollars on frivolous lawsuits that that got she, that she got beat, uh, and and just to to travel and and you know, in po in politics and federal campaigns, you you can't go spend money on on lavish meals or food and things if you otherwise uh, could could have eaten, you know, off the pol right. off the politics off the uh, campaign trail. And uh, so uh, those are the things I want people to start looking at her finances, looking at how she spends her donors' money. I want, her, I want them to start looking at uh, that the truthful things that, that we have proof of, like here, and start informing themselves. And it's not just her. It's, it's all these politicians. The, when you're going to vote for somebody, vote for them because of what they stand for and what they actually do and their morals. Don't vote for what, they co what comes out of their mouth all the time. Because I've told Senator Chase on multiple occasions that if you're talking, you're either exaggerating or lying or both. And she actually admitted it. She said, I know I do it, but I, I, but I don't know I'm doing it when I do it. That's what she said. So b people need to start understanding these things and look at these people because they're, they're destroying our party and they're holding us hostage. It is destroying our party, and it's, it's really a sad thing that that is happening. Um, Shane, and I think, again, badpolitics.us, folks, I, I hope you go to that website and support it. And this is for a website for across the United States. Yeah, it's, it's not, not just, just Virginia. Right. And, uh, and we're in the process of building it. It's registered. It should be up soon. And, uh, and it's going to be uh, very explosive, some of the things we do. And, and obviously, uh, the ones we're working on now are in Virginia, so we're going to be putting a couple of them up. And I think, too, that because we're, we're just voting for firebrands, somehow these the salacious headlines are getting votes. It's really sad. We're missing out on a lot of good candidates, and I've, I've seen it a lot personally um, as I see candidates come through my studio. There's some that are so qualified. They have a constitutional background, and they're, they're ready to serve, but yet they're not a firebrand. They're not out waving a gun or or waving that you should get you know free phones whatever it is arrogant on either side right arrogant gaslighters. arrogant that's a really good term for it shane they're not arrogant gaslighters and people just dismiss them and i i think as a country you know on both sides we complain oh my gosh the morals are going down the tube but yet look who you are voting for who do they associate how do they act and she is so damaged in her district from all the actions that she's done that we're in the in the party, there's, there's a big concern that if she would win that primary, the Democrats are going to come all in, and they might take that seat, and that's something we don't need. And we have a good guy, Glenn Sturdivant. I'm actually supporting him now. I was, I was on the line before. I'm heavily supporting Glenn Sturdivant. Uh, all the senators are, are supporting him. They've, he's got many endorsements. He's got uh, former governors 
And, you know, it's, it's time time to make a change. This this person's opposing Senator, Senator Chase. What, and what's his name again? I didn't catch Glenn it. Glenn Sturdivant. Okay. And he actually has is, is been endorsed by multiple senators, and her, her peers. And that tells you something. It truly does. Oh, of course, she'll say it's, it's they're just there's establishment coming after and circling the wagons. No, they're tired of all your crap that you've done and you, and the way you're destroying the party. Well, folks, again, uh, those clips from the senators that uh, spoke during her censure are, are so powerful, and their entire speeches are. And I hope people do realize that. And again, at the end of the day, um, I I. She's going to come back. She's going to say she's the maverick. She's the one that's out there for the people, and she's going against the establishment, like you said. But, folks. What kind of work can she get done when she doesn't have the support of any of her colleagues? And, and she's the establishment now because she's actually going against her campaign promise and she's running for a third term. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. They all they all come through and say, yes, we want term limits. And then once they get in, I, the power seems to uh, and you know, the if position. If you're not going to do that, don't say it. But see, she said that just to, just to say it because she thought that would give her support. Well, and it does. It does. And that's why we have to, as voters, really look at these candidates. And once they're in office, if they're not voting uh, and, and creating legislation and doing something for your district, we're going to start what are you doing? On, on, on the website. We're also on badpolitics.com. We're also going to start showing legislation, in, especially in Virginia, the next legislative session. We're going to also start putting up the legislation and actually talking about the good and the bad points of those bills because a lot of people, a lot of people don't know. Uh, you know, and even even a lot of the senators, when, when these bills come in, there's a summary, and then if you click on it, they might be 10, 20, 30 pages. And so we're going to start going through those things. Shane Snavely, badpolitics.us. Appreciate you coming down from Virginia to share this with us. Next week, we're going to be talking about the Bright Line Settlement in Martin County. We're going to go over that contract in, in depth. So uh, Bridge is going to be closed. We'll see you next week. Shane Snavely, thank you. Thank you.